we're going to be doing step by step uh, in the, in the making of this particular jig. Uh, so it's a fun jig, catches lots of fish. So uh, stay tuned. Our pile of jigs here. We're just going to go one by one through here, and then I got my airbrush set at 20 psi right now. And this is what I'm wanting to get that, that just sat right there at that se separation line in that jig. And then I come in and get that overspray off and it brings that nice color out. So and then I let them dry. So I'll go through this. So. But it's pretty simple. I mean, it just takes a little bit of. So the Iwata airbrush is a two stage airbrush. Uh, first stage you got air so and then the second stage you have paint come out so uh, and that the farther you pull it back the more paint you got coming out so you got to do some adjustments it has some fine adjustments right here where you can fine-tune it a little bit where you want it and I've got it set where I need it for every, just about everything I do so with that I just lay a light coat on hit it with a little bit of air set it place her down there so I'm only going to do a few of these here and then I'll catch up with you on the next step so uh, with that I'll just that I can do a few I'm getting used to this video stuff. It's kind of fun. So, and I enjoy you guys watching my videos. So, I give you great thanks for that. And I enjoy all those people that stop in the shop and just pick up some tackle and talk to me. Yeah, I'm always willing to share. So, oh, I forgot to say, these jigs here are powder coated. That That's a powder coat on the outside. So, when everything's said and done, it will be this pretext that's right into the powder coat, which is a really nice thing. So with that, I'll catch you on the next segment. For segment number two of the airbrush segment. So here we are. We're just putting the dab of orange right there. It don't show up very well on the gold, but when it's in the water, she just shines. So. Just a little dab will do ya. So, and this gives it that perchy look, that fire tiger look. As you can see, I got some fire tiger up here that I gotta finish up here just shortly. So, this is a quick. Oh, Try to keep them straight on my deal, but not always. Oh. That was about 20 minutes for all these jigs to get the green on them. Uh, these are some of my most popular jigs. So, a lot of work in them. Uh, my pressure set at 15 pounds on my airbrush and I thinned out my fluorescent orange color here it's an opaque so it covers pretty good the other is a transparent which I'm looking to keep that gold shine through the back so this is kind of what we do here at Pete's Tackle, we just whip, whip through them. So not everyone's this exactly the same, as they're pretty darn close. All right, next step will be striping. So folks, stay tuned for the next segment, and don't forget to go down there and subscribe.
We're going to be trying to get some fishing videos out here pretty soon. I haven't been out doing much fishing. I've been trying to keep up with my customer base. So. What's nice about this at this stage is that if I make a mistake, I can just wipe it off. But we try not to make mistakes. Pete, Pete's Tackle. Hey, I'm coming back to you for the fourth step of the slewer jig. I, the first step was uh, powder coat lump. You did not see that. I apologize. We'll do that in another video. Uh, but now we're coming to striping these. And what I use is a Pache flow pin. So it takes a little adjustment to it. I use my Cretex paint, Wicked. So it flows pretty good. So give it a good shake here. Put a little bit in there. Should have enough in there to do all these. Oh, you gotta get that. It's just paint coming out. And then we just adjust this to what we want for our striping. A little thick yet. And that just opens your pin up just so much. Alright, now we're going to do some striping. So we come to the back with this one. little ones get three stripes I'm getting actually a little bit too much yet take some fine tuning there we go uh, get them nice little stripes on there Worked good last long time. So that's kind of what we do with that. Let's see if I can get it down there just a little bit more. Let's see if let me double check this folks. Make sure the camera's showing everything. There we go. We got it now. I had it out of the frame a little bit when I was painting, so oh boy, I hope the first part came out good. I don't want to do any more of these. Ah, not today. So, and now we'll see them. We'll see them start taking the sh taking shape into the pattern that they're supposed to be. So, We'll do one roll of them and then I'll come back to you for the next step, which is eyeballs. You want to clean off your brush, tip of your brush, it gets a little build up on there and then you get a little bit too much flow on the stripes. There we go, We've got some good stripes going now. Uh, you can get these on lure parts online, a few other places. I like the, this is the old one. The new style has the new style has the trigger on the top, and it, it's not ergonomic. And excuse me, but I can lay that down and let that just sit there like that when it's not in use. And don't forget, you got to clean it out. I've forgotten many times not to clean it out because it's not an airbrush. So. Uh, with that, I just used the Cretex paint with it, so, 
these are a deadly little jig. Uh, my partner and I took 10th place the first day. Our pre fish bucket on Cascade Lake was in 10 perch was over 20 pounds in 10 perch. And this is our primary piece of tackle. All we used was Pete's tackle down there. So the first day of the tournament we took uh, 10th place and yeah, we probably could have done better but we were having some mechanical issues with the snow cats overheating and we had to be back at a certain time so we had to leave our fishing grounds and that was an afternoon bite so all right folks we're going to sign off and i'll catch you up next segment hey folks back for the next segment i think this is step four and we're eyeballing at this shot here so my perch, all my perch ones get yellow eyes with a black pupil. So I'll just do the yellow eye and you'll see what I do. So I'm using Cretex yellow. I don't thin it down at all. It actually comes out pretty thick. If I was airbrushing it, I'd have to thin it down. So, but I build these nails in a pin. This is for the pupil, that's for the eye. So. And we just go through and just dot them little buggers. There they go. I'll do one row and get back to you for the pupil. And then these are ready to finish the prep work and get them in the oven and get them. Uh, uh, all done ready for packaging so a little workplace Wednesday here so I want to say thanks to everybody who's watching this uh, tell friends about it share it uh, I'd like to share my experiences and love of tackle making with you so we're just gonna continue on here but these are some of the little tricks you learn along the way. So this idea I got from Kit Johnson at Kit's Tackle. So, and the nail, I was just trying to figure out all sorts of other things to use and oh my God. And I stuck with this for ever, ever since. And it works wonderful. So, big shout out to Kit for that. Johnson, he's got many years of experience. Kits Tackle, they just came out with a new minnow, minnow jig for walleye and trout and every species. Works great. So, go check out their new jig. Alright folks, that was the yellow. That's opaque yellow in the uh, Cretex that I paint that with. So, with that, I'll see you back when we're uh, dotting the eyes. Here we're at our last step in the painting process and uh, actual painting and we're going to be using some opaque black Cretex for the eyeballs. You don't thin it out or anything, just put her in. Don't need much. So, and we just start like this. I'll do one row of them. So I flip my, my dauber over. Put the eyeball on. See that eyeball? There we go. There, see that eyeball? Yeah, so we'll do a little row of those. And the more paint you get on there, the better eyes you get. It flows just like a pin. So, and you put your eyes wherever you want, down at the bottom, get them a silly eye and stuff, wherever that pupil you want it. So, I might tra change up here and go to another tool here after this row. That gives you an idea of the eyeballs.
just cruise right along. And that's perch eye on the, the perch pattern. And then I'm going to do a, got a couple on this row for fire tiger. They should be, paint should be set up by now. On there. So it's pretty awesome little jigs. Look good, catch lots of fish. So there's the red. There's the eyeball on the red one right there. So, and then we got to come in and clean out this eye here. I'll show you that process too. So, I built a little tool for that years ago. Anytime you're using powder coat, you want to clean the eyes out for, for yourself if you're selling them to a customer. You want the eyes cleaned out on these powder coated. So, with that, folks, we got that row done. Uh, the next step will be cleaning the, the the line eye, and then after that, we'll load them up and put them in the oven for their fi final ki final cure. So, look good, last long time. GoPro, stop recording. Oops. I'm going to get one tool here and I'll be right back with you. Alright folks, this is a little tool I built for cleaning out a uh, powder coat on the eyes uh, of jigs. So these guys, th things have had sufficient time to dry these uh, jigs here. So I'm going to clean some eyes on them for you. So. It's pretty simple. Come in there in that in that eye. Powder coats just like glass. So that cleans that right out. Nice clean eye. So better get a bucket to put them in. So you can tell this is a small operation. I use a jelly an old jelly tub for throwing my jigs in so but that's what it does you just get in there and clean that eye out real quick and the next step is uh, baking them in the oven and they're all done ready for packaging Well, with that, folks, this is just a little short segment here. Next segment, I'll show you when we put them in the racks and just a quick put them in the rack. And then after that, we'll put them in the oven and step by step down the, down the deal we go. So, but these are the jigs. Well, folks, you have a wonderful day. I will catch you in the next segment here. GoPro stop recording. We're pretty much the last final step for except for unloading these and packaging. So but what we do here is we load them up in these in these racks. Get them as close to each other because you want to get as many in there as possible. So Move them out. And this is basically what we do in Pete's Tackle Shop. So this is a little workplace Wednesday for you on how things are done during one day. It is now, I started at 9 o'clock this morning. It's now 4.54 in the afternoon. So that gives you an idea the length of process and making just a few gigs. Day's work. So, seeing the smiles on people's faces and teaching somebody how to do what I do, that makes me happy. So, well, folks, I just want to say thank you again for watching. Don't forget to go down to the bottom and hit that subscribe button. When it pops up and gives you that notification bell, hit that notification bell. 
so you're notified when these uh, videos come out. You never know what's coming out on a workplace Wednesday. It could be anything from tackle making to uh, tackle tips, uh, how to rig, different stuff like that. So we're coming into the middle of the ice fishing season. It's January 21st today. So uh, workplace Wednesday, this will be released. So, you know, get out there and go fishing. It'd be some good. It does me good when I go. I'm going to sneak out hopefully Friday and go do some more pre fishing for a tournament on February 22nd. Got to locate some bigger perch on this lake and some crappie and some pumpkin seeds. So, with that said, Y'all have a wonderful day. GoPro stop recording. All right, folks, here's the jigs. They're just about done. We got about three minutes left in the oven for them to cure. So this is what you get. So I'll give you a little close up. And that'll cure them to rock hard. So that'll be a rock hard finish on there with that powder coat. So let's get you in a little closer there. All right, I'm going to shut up the bacon door. There we go. All right, folks. Talk to you later. GoPro, stop recording.